Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. And more spirit takes over coming past the wire. It will be more spirit to win the Los Alamitos Futurity by a length and a half. This is just an unbelievable day for Bob Baffert and Mike Smith. They are unstoppable. More Spirit has dominated the Met Mile. He won it by seven lengths. You know, regardless of what sport you're talking about, uh, it's very difficult to compare athletes from, from different eras. I mean, I mean, how do you do it? You know, so much in the game change. So much about uh, the sports change, the times change. Uh, you know, can 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 you compare Joe Namath to Tom Brady? Uh, I don't know. I, I I really think it's 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 ultra subjective, and just so hard to do. Uh, you, you know, how do how do you compare Mickey Mantle to to Willie Mays to to, to Barry Bonds to anybody? I mean, you, you know, just. It's all, it's all subjective, you know, it's all uh, a matter of opinion. Unless you, uh, you know, put Rocky Marciano and Muhammad Ali in the ring together, you really don't know how that's going to turn out. Um, you could have your favorites, you could have your opinions, uh, but that's all they are is opinions and they really don't don't mean anything. And in and, 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 and horse racing, it's the same. Uh, Man of War and Secretariat were both called Big Red. Were both outstanding racehorses are both considered to be the best ever. Uh, if you put them in a gate together, is the only way you find out who 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 is going to win. Uh, you could think you know, but you don't. And 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 that's not only true for our equine athletes; it's also true for their human counterparts, the jockeys, who are pound for pound some of the greatest athletes in the world. But how do you compare riders from different eras? Uh, it's so so difficult to do. Uh, you know, the greatest rider ever. Who is it? I don't know that that could be answered definitively. I think it's a matter of opinion. But I can say this without any question of doubt. Uh, Lafitte Pinquet would be in any any reasonable conversation about uh, the best ever and one of the greatest of all time. And, you know, that said, I think that the one-on-one uh, -on -one with Lafitte you're about to see um, will be very enlightening as to, you know, some of the reasons why he was such a great champion, what his dedication and motivation was like, and uh, you'll hear some great stories from Lafitte as well. So thank you for tuning in. It was an absolute pleasure to speak to Lafitte Pinquet, and like I said, he is on any list one of the greatest ever to ride uh, a racehorse. This is a reach the starting gate. It's post time. Cold front, the favorite comes forward. And they're into the stretch. Cold front put to the test. Cold front does it again. Back in the field of the Amsterdam. Okay, everybody, I am here with, uh, I'm going to say the great Lafitte Pinquet, but I should really say, uh, arguably, the best of all time, or certainly in the conversation of the best riders of all time. Uh, Lafitte, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's absolutely a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Jonathan. Anytime, anytime you want to, you want to interview me, you're very welcome. Um, no, I, I appreciate it. Because like, like I told you, I go back a long way with horse racing. And when I was a little kid, we used to go up to Saratoga. And one of the first races I remember, I don't remember the year, but I was, I was a little kid, but I was already, you know, kids, they love sports, uh, you know, athletes and stuff like that. But to me, I knew, you know, the athletes in like football, baseball, basketball, but also jockeys because my parents loved the races. On the weekends, we went to the races. August, we went up to Saratoga. So I looked at all the riders the same way, you know, most kids looked at athletes. And one of the things I remember was the Whitney Stakes. And you rode a horse named Tri-Jet. And I was already starting to watch races and jockeys and be able to tell the difference, you know, who I thought was good, who I thought was great. And I remember he stumbled out of the gate 
and he sat off a horse. I want to say the name was Infuriator, who went to the lead, opened up a big lead, and turned it for home, swung outside, and in that classic Lafitte Pinquet finish, just right hand, pumping, 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 just nailed him at the wire. And I was like, wow, that guy really, really got, got that horse home. I don't know. Do, do you remember back to, to that race? Because you win so many stakes. That's, that's not even one of the big ones to you, to Whitney. Well, I remember the race, yes. I remember the horse. That was one of the few horses that uh, Cooper had that could run, you know, because he didn't have that many, many horses that could run. Right. And, uh, but try yet, he was a very honest horse. He always went out there and and tried and tried to win, you know. And he was one of my favorite horses to ride at that time. Really, really. Yeah. Oh, that, that that's interesting because I I remember that race. I remember just you know as a little kid being being very impressed with with yeah. with the rider. Now you know your career is 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 ridiculous. I mean, you know, you won an outstanding Eclipse Award jockey in 1971. You won it three, four, five more times, whatever. But the last one you won was in 85. So that's like 14 years later. So that just shows the longevity and how, how many years, and even beyond that, when you didn't win Eclipse, even beyond that into the 2000s, you were still winning grade one races. I mean, it just, how, how did you keep it going for that long well uh to tell you the truth is that i fell in love with my job i love what i was doing i like the preparation i like to uh to be in shape you know and i like the, the first thing that i liked the most was it was the competition i love it when i was competing you know for living writer right or, uh jockey of the year and things like that you know that excited me that that makes me better when I was fighting for Leon Ryder, it makes me better. I try, I, I try harder. I, uh, I did everything to try to be the Leon Ryder, and really? that, that's 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 what I like, you know. Right. And and of course, um, uh, winning steak was uh, ice on the cake, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, now, uh, I I gotta ask you about this. This is this because you know, there's another thing that I I remember so many parts of your career because I was there as a fan, but. I was there on uh, the Monday that Eddie Maple won the Met Mile on Conquistador Cielo. Yeah. Nobody dreamed that the next Saturday he was going to be running in the Belmont Stakes. Now, Eddie Maple got hurt, and you rode him five days later in the Belmont, which was, I think, Woody's first in that string of five. Uh, and I always wanted to know, running back in five days, coming out of that mile race, going to mile and a half, what were your thoughts going into the race? Obviously, that was a horse you didn't know. And I always want to know, did Woody give you any instructions before that epic Belmont Stakes where it was pouring out? I remember watching, uh, standing under the thing outside at Belmont so we didn't get poured on ring. Oh, yes. He, um, uh, which I was very surprised too because I remember uh, watching the Med Mile and right. he was close to the pace. He was close to the pace and uh, he won. Right. And then uh, I got called. I had no idea. I mean, I, I just rode a, a horse at Hollywood Park. And my agent, Tony Matos, came up to me and he said, listen, you want to go to ride Conquista, Conquista Cielo tomorrow in the Melmo? I said, what? He said, yes. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'd like to go, you know. Right. So sure enough, right away, you know, I pre we prepared everything. And I, I flew that night. And uh, the next day, uh, in the race, just before the race, when we were at the paddock, um, Woody said to me, uh, listen, this horse last time was close to the pace, and I want you to take him way back. And I was surprised. You know? Wow, okay. <laughs> yes, I want you to take him way back. I don't want you to get close to the pace because uh, he is a mile and one half, but, but do that. He said, take him. I said, wow, you know, I was surprised. And I did. I took him way back. And boy, when I asked him, he was flying. I tell you, he was flying. So he won. He won pretty easy. And then uh, uh, that was a very uh, joyful, joyful uh, race to win. No, I'm, I'm sure. And that started Woody's little streak. And then you won a, 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 what I thought was just a, a gutsy Belmont uh, with caveat. 
Yes. Now you got to take me through that one. Okay, you're on the turn. You're on okay. the inside. You know, Jonathan, I'm sorry. I I got it. I got it wrong over here. I um I was I, I thought we were talking about caviar for some reason. It's conquistador cielo. I'm sorry. I go I go back. Conquistador cielo. Uh, yes, he won. I I called the day before, and then I rode him in the Belmont, and I tell you, he that's one of the easiest rides I've had on any big race that I won. He won yeah. so easy that day. And then with caveat, that's what happened with caveat. When I went to ride caveat uh, the, in uh, the race before, he, lay, he, he ran a mile and he was close to the pace. And then when I went to, to ride him that day, uh, Woody said to me, you're taking way back. And I was surprised. It was with caveat. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. No, right. Because Conquista Cielo went wire to wire. Yes, he yes, did. Yes. But the only um, thing I did with Conquista or Cielo was that um, since he had so much speed, I didn't want him to get rank on me. Right. And track, even though the track was wet, you know, and, and I, I was suspecting he loved that track like that. And then he broke. And I kept him way, so I would try to keep him way, way out in the middle of the track, yeah. And trying to stay away from all the horses. Okay. And believe me, when I made the, 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 the turn, I, I caught to the inside and I was, do, he was doing things so easy, so easy that at the half of my pole, I felt somebody come inside of me. And I, I didn't care if he would have gone to the lead, I would have let him because my horse was doing it so easy. I knew at the stretch he'll take off again. We really? see it at the head of the stretch. Uh, he just opened up on the, in the, on the turn when he fell down, the horse coming inside, he just took off again, just on his own. And, and he won so easy that day. So you, 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 knew, you knew early on in the race in that Belmont, you, you, you had it won. Yes, definitely. Okay. The way he was doing it, the way he was just so easy, you know, so nice. Now, now getting back to caveat. Okay, caveat was very. I remember watching that Belmont. I was there for that one, and he was so far back. I thought he yeah. got no shot. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just not going to win today. And then he made that big move on the turn, and it looked from you know me watching as a as as a fan, it looked like you know he made up that ground and you were on the inside, and you looked like you thought about going inside or outside, and then the horse drifted out a little bit. You saw that room. And I always described it, and maybe maybe you won't like how I describe, it, but I'm like Lafitte just bulled his way through with with, with that horse, and I, I I used I laughed with my friend. I said he knocked Greg McCarran out of the way with our point. <laughs> yeah. but, so, so walk me through that. You're on the turn. You're coming up. What do you see in front of you? How did that all play out? I tell you, there was a hole. In, there was a horse in the inside where I I had a place to go. Right. But just as I let my horse go, and he because he was flying as right. soon as it, he was there and you just touched the horse just a little bit enough so he closed the horse even more you know right. and that if i take hold if i take a hold of my horse not only i could go down but i would have lost the race so yeah. i had to go through i had to go through there and i did hmm. you know was there an inquiry that day i don't remember I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. It, it was. was yeah. Yes, okay. Definitely was an inquiry. Yes. And uh, and uh, Greg, which uh, which I um, I should have said thank him for for it. But he uh, he told the story that the, the horse outside pushed him in, pushed him in a little bit. That, uh, that the I horse had, outside was slow yeah. gold, I believe. Yes, slow gold. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So he probably uh, saved me from me being taken down. You know. Right. Well, he was. He was. He. That was that was pretty 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 nice of him because um, yes. you would have probably gone behind him into third yes. place if they would have if they would have yes. would have done anything. Uh, that that I thought was probably one of the gutsiest rides ever uh, in any race and especially in a, in in a, in a triple crown race. Yes. But you did that all the time, Rafid. I mean, yes. seriously, you 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 would just yes. you, you know you ruled the rules for a long time. Another ride that that I thought was really special that I, I, I want you to talk about, spend a buck. Uh, that's a horse that I think I think you rode because Cordero had the horse and win the Derby on the horse, and I think because they didn't go for the Preakness, they went the Jersey route for that bonus. Yeah. Um, and Angel was committed to ride in New York or something. They 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 reached out for you, and. 
you just refuse to lose. I, I, I mean, I, I remember the one race, I want to think it was Cardin Nascra, who I think you won the Travis with that same year. Yes. Um, and he just couldn't get by you, man. Yes. Um, uh, I tell you, going to that race, uh, I, I felt a lot of pressure because I thought the horse should have, should have win anyway, you know, and right. I to give this all the best possible ride that I could give him. And coming down the stretch, believe me, coming down the stretch, I didn't think I was going to win this race. And I did something that I almost never did with any horse. I never really whip a horse before the stretch. Right. And when I felt like I had no horse, I said, I, I got to do something. And then I whip him a couple of times. And for some reason, the courage that this horse had, he kind of gave me a little response. And once I felt like he, he, he gave it to me a little bit, I, I rode him as hard as I could, you know, and, and, and we got to the wire first. And believe me, I was so relieved to tell you the truth because I, I thought for sure, for sure, he was dead coming down the stretch. Really, that that, that that's a, it's a, interesting to hear, hear hear you say that. Uh, yeah. So so, no, you, you felt like there was no gas in the tank yes. as early as the turn, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I thought I was beat then, and I said I got to do something, and I whip him. I whip him about two couple of times hard, you know, and right. I could feel like he 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 wanted he wanted to run a little bit, and I push him and push him as hard as I could. And uh, to tell you the truth, when we passed the wire, <laughs> I was so relieved. <laughs> and I said, thank God that this horse won. Because, you know, you hate to get beat with a favorite like that, with a horse that looks like, we, we jockeys, you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we ride a good horse, you know. We, right. uh, we, want, we want to win, we want everybody, everything to go perfect. And it went. when it doesn't go that way, believe me, it's, it's hard, it's hard on us. Right. No, I'm, 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 I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. You, you guys are, 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 are ultra competitive and, and have to be. Uh, let me ask you, what, what do you watch a lot of races today or the big races at all? Do you still follow racing or no? Well, no, really. I don't follow races uh, very close, but I watch races once in a while. There has been a couple of, couple of jockeys that have been, have been to my house that they wanted they want me to help him a little bit, and I right. have. So I watch him ride, you know, and 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 sometimes they uh, uh, the two or three jockey that have come over here, they I could tell that they improve after I talk to them. They 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 start riding better than after they talk to me, and uh, I, I like that, you know. I like to help yeah. young young riders definitely. Yes. Do you think that that riding and, and race riding has changed from from when you were doing it to today, the styles or um, are you think they're less aggressive or more aggressive or, or anything like that? Oh, definitely less less aggressive now. It, it used to be more aggressive in, in the, time, at the time the time that I came to California, especially in California. It was very, really? very aggressive here. And uh, there were a lot of horses in the races, and you, if you, 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 in almost every race, you try to be in the best position that you could take, leaving the gate and during the, the first part of the race. And um, if you weren't that close, believe me, most of the time you you didn't have no chance to win, unless you had a horse that a really good horse come from from behind. But uh, there was a lot of bumping, a lot of a lot of and. And those times, the stewards were very lenient in California. They they weren't as tough as they are now, you know. Right. So uh, riders used to take a lot of chance, more chances than than they do now. And now there's there are less horses running. Right. So uh, you know you don't see the incidents, the uh, accident, and the uh, bumping that you uh, I, I, we used to have in those times. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I, I can see that just, just watching that, uh, you know, back then it seemed to be a lot more uh, what I would call race riding and, the, you know, bumping and, you know, aggressive moves as, as, as opposed to today. Yes. Um, I now, would, believe me, I would have loved to be riding now. Love. Piece of cake, been, right? Yeah. <laughs> It would be a lot easier for me, you know. To, uh, right. I used to hate it when I I wasn't a favorite, and they were 
13, 12 horses in the race, you know. Right. <laughs> Especially right. if you are if you are high speed, you know, you know that you're gonna have two or three horses chasing you right right there with you, you know. Right. So um, uh, 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 interesting question. When you run it, when a when a rider is on a speed horse, or, or when Lafitte Pinquet, a rider of your caliber, you're on a speed horse, and your horse likes to go. You don't you don't want to take him back. Yes. But there's other speed in the race that you know is going to be with you. Yes. Is there anything you can do to kind of not give up your chances, not compromise his chance? You know what I'm saying? Like uh, if, if I own a horse or I'm a trainer and we got a horse that we know wants to be on the lead, but we know there's other speed. Like w w what can we do to still well, get a good trip? Thing, the only thing you can do is you try to break as good as you can and try to be in front of the other horse, see if the other guy, the other guy takes back, you know? Okay. But sometimes, since you know that your horse likes the lead, you have to go. You have to right. go, and if somebody, if somebody goes with you, you just ride the horse the best way you can and hoping that the other horse give up and uh, you can win the race. But um, a lot of happen that, a lot of time, that's not the case. The other horse go with you and somebody at the at the end catch you, you know. So uh, and but that's the name of the game. That's that's racing. That's horse racing. Now you 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 got that Kentucky Derby win with Swale. Yes. Um, what was that like? And I, I I know that was the race that eluded you for a while, and you really wanted, and you you, you get that one with Claiborne Farm and and, and Swale. Uh, what 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 was that like? That was beautiful. That I I would remember that that race. Oh, I remember that race all the time. Uh, that's the race I wanted to win. That's the race that I you hear ever since you were a little kid, and uh, and then you become a jockey. I became a jockey, and and I came to the United States, and just remember the first time I rode in the Kentucky Derby. It was a it was a dream come true, and I and I and the first time I rode a good horse at was one of the favorite and uh, he finished about six or seven, I can't remember. And ever since that time, uh, I brought some, some nice horses and it kept, that race kept, kept eluding me. So I just kept trying, you know, and I, I thought one, I remember thinking, well, I'm gonna be one of those jockeys that uh, I will never win a derby, you know? <laughs> yeah. And and then in, in 1984, you know, I got lucky to get on swell, and and in fact, it, it didn't almost happen because uh, he ran in the in the Lexington handicap. Right. He, he didn't run good that day. He finished second or third, but the horse won one for about ten lengths. So when my agent saw that, he called me up, and uh, right after the races. Um, and he says, uh, listen, uh, I think we should, we should ride a horse in California that you've been riding, a horse by Seattle Slough. And I said to him, you know, Tony, you know what? If this horse runs his race in the derby, he's going to win. So we better stay in there. We better stay with him. Interesting. And, and yeah. you, you know, that was the, the year that I think um, the year before Devil's Bag, Woody's other horse was the champion yes. two-year-old. Yes. And Eddie Maple kind of got committed with him yes. and he just didn't, wasn't the same at three. Um, I always thought Swale was better, which people would say I was crazy, but Swale looked to me like, I, I remember visually, he was an impressive looking horse. Yes. You know, he just, yes. he was big and strong and he used to curl his head kind of like Seattle Slough did. Um, and he, he just had that that look, and uh, and then I he he lost the Preakness and come back and win the Belmont. That's right. Yes, right. In the Preakness. He had no excuse. I don't know. I really don't know what happened in that race. He was laying, I think, about third, and um, since I remember being laying third, but in a good distance, and he just didn't fire coming down the stretch. He he didn't put up his run. He, he didn't do anything. Right. So. Uh, when he went, when we went to uh, to to Belmont, the um, the um, the assistant trainer Mike Griffith, he told me that uh, he said, "Listen, Lafitte, this horse is going to run big today." I tell you why, because he 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 worked too fast for the uh, for the um, uh, for the pregnancy. 
he said he left his race on the track on the mo in, in the morning and now we make sure that he he works slow so believe me it's going to be a different different horse that made me feel really good you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure yeah I'm sure. because that, that was a good excuse Right. So, uh, uh, sure enough, he broke, and I made a very easy pace, and at the head of the stretch, he just took off again. And right. uh, yes. Now, now, the two other horses I want I, I, I want to ask you about. One, one is, um, and I know you rode a lot of horses for Frank Martin, uh, and win a lot of races for him. But Sham, uh, what was your take on Sham? And the fact that he come along when Secretary, who a lot of people think of it, you know, was 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 the best ever. Uh, what what was your take on all of that? How good was Sham? Was he unfortunate that Secretary was just maybe better than him, or what was your take on all of that? Yeah, well, Sham was a fantastic horse. He was a runner. He could really, really run this horse, and he was just unlucky that came that year. And uh, he just couldn't be secretaria, but uh, but he uh, he he won some good races here in California. I knew he was a special horse when he won the uh, San Ira Derby, and right. and and then he he went to I couldn't ride him in the uh, I think it was the Wood Memoria was it that race before the yeah. and um, he finished second and it was a slow pace or whatever the excuse was, but. Uh, uh, when I rode him in the uh, in the Kentucky Derby, um, since there were the rumors that board rulers and secretary was by board ruler, they couldn't go mile and one quarter. Well, I, I felt very confident that I could win that race that day. Right. You know? And Pancho, the trainer, Pancho Martin, he uh, we went for dinner that night and he said to me, listen, my horse is going to do something that no other horse I ever done in the derby. That's what he told me. Okay. And sure enough, he was right because he, did. he, brought right. The, he also brought the track record. Right. Know? He and, did. Uh, no other horses than Secretaria or Sham have done that, not even close in the Kentucky Derby. So he was a very special horse you know, that came up in the wrong year. And he got hurt in the Belmont, didn't he? He did get hurt in the Belmont, and there's a lot of people that doesn't know that they, right. they, they think he just retiring. But he, he um, I don't, I, I think I pulled him off before the wire. I thought right. he bled, but I didn't see no, no blood in the colors and my colors or nothing. So I looked for that during, during the last part of the race, the, the race, and uh, uh, when I pulled him up, and 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 Frank Martin came to me at the track, and he says. Uh, why didn't you let my horse run? And I said, Pancho, this, something is wrong with this horse. He, okay. he definitely something wrong. But he wasn't limping or anything. He was walking fine. And uh, he was very upset with me. And he quit talking to me. And he just walked away. And he, uh, uh, well, I went, I came back to California. And that was on a Saturday. And then on a Monday, Monday morning, really early in the morning, it was about 6.30 in the morning, he called me up. And he says, uh, listen, uh, I want to apologize. Thank you for selling my horse because uh, wow. he, he will never run again. And wow, I, felt, was... I, felt, I felt very good that, uh, that I was right, you know, that uh, definitely was something wrong with the horse. Yes. And, and you're right. A lot, a lot of people don't know that. I mean, the word yeah. around the racetrack was that he just got discouraged and couldn't beat Secretary and said, that's it, the heck with it. And no, no, he, he, got, he, he got hurt. And if he don't get hurt, he definitely he finished second in the race. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's a very um, interesting story. Yeah. Uh, another thing I want to ask you about, a little bit of controversy, okay? And you're a competitive guy, so I know this had to be the, the Travers, a yeah. firm. Yes. Okay. Talk, talk me through, through, through that race. Well, uh, in the Travers, uh, we went to the first turn and uh, I was, uh, Cordero was like a, maybe a head in front of me. And uh, he said to me, my horse trying to get out. And yes, we took the, uh, the turn, the first turn kind of wide. And then we were in the back, the back side, but I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care being that wide because I was running very easily. You know, I knew I had Angel any, Anytime I, 
the horse that I was worried about was uh, uh, what's his Alidar. Name? Alidar. Alidar. Yes. So finally, um, I I I look at Angel and uh, he he's riding. You know, I mean, he's he's not. I don't see him fighting his horse. And then I look back and I see uh, I see uh, Alidar in the inside. And I say, well, I don't know, it's about time for me to move because I know we're going slow, you know, and Ali that is in this. Uh, and I move to the lead. And as long as I move to the lead, my horse slow down because he loves the competition. He likes to be with another horse, you know? Right. So we kept on going. And by the time we got to the, uh, to the turn, I thought for sure nobody was inside of me. I had no idea that Ali that was there. And I took the turn. And I, what it surprised me that um, usually when 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 you you when you tie somebody, the jockey lets you know, hey, you know, I didn't right. hear I didn't hear a peep, I didn't hear nothing. Was surprised that uh, George didn't say anything. If he said to me, I'm here, I let him, I let him, I let him, I let him. I, I know right. I'm not that stupid to shut somebody off. And I went and sh sure enough, he got shut off. And, but I have no idea that he was there, you know, because I, that was something, if I would have, if I would have done it on Porpe, that was very stupid because I know I'm going to come down if I do something like that. So obvious. Right. You know? So, uh, uh, I was surprised when I saw the inquiry and then I saw the read room and say, Oh my God, I didn't, I have no idea that he was there, you know, and I, that's one of the worst feeling that I had in my career that I remember that uh, disappointed and uh, I um, I came back to California that night we me and my wife was with me in Saratoga we went we went back to uh, 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 Kennedy and uh, there was no straight flight then so we slept in the International Hotel that night the next morning at seven o'clock we took another flight to California and then we got to California and, and then I told my wife, you know what? I'm so disappointed. I'm so down that um, I don't think I want to ride today. I'm going to have to go to the track and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to talk to the reporters and they're going to ask me all the question. I'm tired of answering this, their question and repeat myself, you know, and, um, and then I start thinking, you know what? Eventually, I got I to go and ride, you know, I said, well, might as well go, go, go today. So I went to the track and sure enough, all the reporter asked me all the questions and all this and all that. And I ended up winning four races that day. That wow. I, if I would have take off that day and I would have, <laughs> and, and I would have seen all those, I would have seen all those horses winning, believe me, I would have, <laughs> I would have felt <laughs> that worse than <laughs> So uh, I'm glad, sure. I'm glad I said to myself, yeah, I, I'm going to go and face the music. And sure enough, I won four races. So that made me feel a little better. Yes. Now, now all, all the, I, so I guess that was all nonsense, all the controversy about that, where Laz Barrera said that uh, Angel was trying to carry you out and help George, who was his buddy. They were two New York riders. Uh no, nothing to that, right? No, I don't think so. No, because he hollered at me in the first turn. My my horse trying to get out. Right. You know? And he actually yelled that to you going into the first time. Yes, yes, yeah. Right. A lot of see a lot of people don't realize that. I learned that 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 riders actually talk to each other. Yes. When I was a little kid, okay, I used to go to Aqueduct. And I cut a little hole in the fence and used to sneak in yeah. and watch races from the top of the stretch, bend down right at the outside rail at the top of the stretch, okay? And when the horses would pass me, I never knew this because when you watch on TV, you just have no idea. But when they would pass me, I would hear the riders yelling at each other, hey, get out of the way, move over, I'm coming through, da -da. sometimes cursing at each other and I would watch it and it fascinated me because I never knew that was going on in a race because watching on TV, you don't hear it, you know? Yeah. Um, but back then, I don't know how much it happens today, but back then when they used to turn for home at Aqueduct, uh, there was a lot of chatter going on. Yes, yes. We, we talked. We talked during the race. We let, them, we let each other know where we are. 
sometimes we get mad we say we, right. <laughs> we 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 cause each other you know and things like that you know and yeah definitely it's a lot of talking sometimes uh now now you, you know you rode so many so many champions and so many great horses with heart with speed turf dirt talk. those are some great great babies you rode landa luce and you know horses like that so, could you pick a favorite or a couple of favorites that really just got to you? Uh, well, I remember some races that, that I won, you know, they were some, well, Alanda Luz, well, she would have been something very special, definitely. Right. Uh, I, I remember, but I remember a race where uh, a horse, uh, Kitty, Little Kitty or Kitty something, there was the, uh, the Hollywood, the uh, Delmar Der Derby, and when Lucas, he, he put the, this little fill in the race and he put me on it. And believe me, I, I didn't think I had any chance because uh, Charlie Whittingham had a horse in there. I don't remember his name, that it was like, it was, it looks like a really, really, uh, uh, a horse that should win by three or four lengths, you know, and, right. and coming down the stretch, I was fighting for the lead and, at the stretch, this horse went by me and went by me by almost a half a length or, or a long neck. And I switched my stick to the left and I started getting on this filly. And I'm telling you, she she gave me everything. She had the last 60 of a mile and we won by a nose. That race, I'm telling you, I was, it was so unbelievable. I was so happy that I won that, proud of that little filly that the race that she put up against this this horse that was like a cinch to win. Right. And things like that that happened in my career, happened in my career that I remember. And there were such a good races that I'm I'm proud not only of the horse, but of myself, you know, for for riding, for riding these this, these horses the way I did. No doubt. Um what was John Henry like to ride? John Henry, John Henry was a um a very easy horse to ride. He he has speed. They could come from behind, and he run he run the uh, the uh, the turf well, and and on the dirt they could run on the dirt too. And but uh, he he could do anything. John Henry was a very special horse. I remember one time I rode him in a big race over here on the turf, and I got caught but between three horses in the backside, and. Coming down the stretch, I, I didn't think I had any chance to win because it was too far back. Right. And all of a sudden, I saw a little hole that opened up right in front of me, and I went through. <laughs> he, ended up, he ended up winning the race by two, by two lengths. I couldn't believe it how how fast the horse went through the stretch. You know, that was an unbelievable unbelievable race for him. Right. Uh, I'm just uh, yeah, this is a, a, a great great. Great stories to me. Uh, let me ask you this, and this is a bit of a tough one, so I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Okay. Is there one race that comes to mind where the great Lafitte Pinquet wishes, I wish I could do that over, I would have done something different? Oh, there were many. <laughs> a lot? <laughs> well, we, 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 we jockeys, we are very hard on ourselves. We are very uh, hard. Well, you know, you probably don't know this, um, but I know, you know, we, 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 we blame ourselves all the time. You know, we are very, I was very hard on myself. And, right. I, and, and, I, and there were many times when I went into the race and I said, I'm going to ride this horse this way. I plan the race and then I go and say, I go and the trainer tell me something different. And I say, well, what do I do? I said, well, I want to follow his instruction. So I follow his instruction and I get beat. And I, ah, I said, I should have, I should have done it myself. You know, I should have ride the horse that I, the way I wanted to, you know. So, uh, but you know what? It, 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 when, there was one time at Hollywood Park when I, it, I, in the 70s, in the early 70s, where I was winning so many races. And believe me, I was riding the horse the way I wanted to ride him. Right. You know, even if the trainer would tell me ride the horse this way, I rode it the way I want to ride him. You know why? Because things were working for me, and I knew I knew the horse. I watching his races before, even if I rode him 
for the first time. And I say, I think I know how the source want to be written, you know? Right. And, and I say, well, if he don't win and the trainer gets mad at me, I don't care because I got, I got so many calls in every race, you know? So I ride another horse in the race. So it wasn't a problem riding horses. So I was riding the horse. I wanted to ride him. And I, I won in one meeting over there, 148 races. Wow. One meeting over there. The, the jockey who finished second, one about 76, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Now, you said earlier about, about staying in shape. You always kept it in, in good shape. Uh, how, 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 what was your regimen like? Like, what, 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 what did you do to, to stay in good shape all those years? And even now, you're, 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 you're still yeah. in good shape. Well, I'll tell you why. Because um, ever since I was, when I, when I was 15 years old, and they told me that I, I was going to be too big to, uh, to be a jockey, I, it, it was like, uh, it was uh, a challenge to me. I said, no, I'm going to be a jockey. And mm-hmm. I started dieting right away. At 15 years old, I started dieting very hard. And I think it helped me because it got my, my body used to, uh, uh, to work with very little food, you know? And, uh, and then all through my life, I had to watch my weight because if I didn't, I would have to retire. You know, I couldn't yeah. let myself go because I, I used to say, if I let myself go, uh, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be so hard for me to lose it. And uh, I, it, 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 it's going to bother me, you know, it's going, and I, I didn't want to take a chance of doing that, you know, letting myself go, like, uh, like uh, going on a vacation and start eating everything I want. No, I, I just didn't do it because I knew it would cost me. Right. So, uh I got used to watching myself. I feel good this way, you know. I uh, uh, that's the only way to 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 live a good life, I think, and don't get sick and being uh, feeling good, you know. And that's yeah. I had to do it throughout my career, and now after I retire, I I keep doing the same thing because I think it helped me, helped me. So the, the the Wayne Lucas story on the plane is true. Well, I don't remember that, you know. I, <laughs> you don't know the story, right? People must ask you about that. <laughs> I don't remember, you know. Could right. it happen? I don't know. No. But uh, I, let, me, I, let me ask you this, see how good your memory is, because I remember this. Do you remember, and you're probably not going to remember. Well, maybe you will. Do okay. you remember being on the Dean Martin Rose Show? Yes. Okay, you do remember that. Okay, yeah. I remember as a kid seeing that where they Back Dean Martin used to have the Rose Show where they where, where they had the, and, they, and they had you on it one day. They had leading jockey Lafitte Pinkay. Yeah, with Jack Klugman. Right, exactly. We were, we were roasting Jack Klugman. Yes. Oh, right. Okay, you're right. I, I knew you were on it. Was, okay, it was Jack Klugman. They didn't roast you. They roast Jack Klugman. Because yeah. right. yeah. I, re- I I remember something you said. I remember the joke that you told. This is how, how my memory works. I remember you said something like, "I look up to up to Jack, but hey, I'm a jockey. I look up to everybody." Something like this. Something, something like that. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm surprised you remember that. Um, oh yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't want to keep you all night, man. I keep you all night with this kind of stuff because I love it. I'm a That's you know, okay. big, big, <laughs> big fan of yours. Um, <clears throat> and just there's just so, so many of uh, 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 these horses. Uh, first Breeders' Cup win. Paso, I think, right? The Bre- first Breeders' Cup, I won. Uh, I, I might have been Paso. No, I don't think it was Tasso. Okay. I know you won on Tasso. Yeah, that was in, in Aqueduct. Yes, Aqueduct. Yeah, it was by a nose, remember? Right, come flying by a nose, right. He was, he was... I thought, you know, I thought I won by a, a neck because right. I was so way out, outside. So right. when they took so long for the picture, I said, oh my God. I said, how could I have been so wrong, you know? I was and working I as a... Yeah, I was working as a mutual clerk that day, okay? And I bet on Tasso, and I didn't think he won. I thought he lost. I didn't. I never thought he got up. When they put the photo up, I was happy because I, I didn't think. I didn't think. I didn't think he got up. Uh, and the, the the nose was oh my god! Like I, <laughs> I remember. I remember. Now years years into your career, okay. Um, 
you rode one of the one of the one of Bobby Frankel's horses, uh, Medallia de Oro. I think yeah. you won the Hollywood Gold Cup or the Santa Anita Handy. I forget which one, but you won one of the big California races on him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was late in your career. Yes. And then I read him in the Kentucky Derby. Oh, did and you ride him in the Derby? I didn't remember yeah, that. Yeah, okay. He, he ran in the Derby and um, he he broke a little sideways that race. I I, I, I wish I would have been better position, positioned that, that he was, you know, and I think he finished four or something. Right. And uh, he took me off the next time and then he... And then he uh, he put uh, somebody out the sorno. He, he ran the Preakness and he ran really bad. And then he went into the uh, Belmont and he just got beat. He just got beat right. by uh, by a neck or something. Big long shot, yes. Yeah, so he, he, yeah. he was a good horse. He was a very good horse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's it like when when a rider that that made it to the top like you did you know what i mean where well, you're on top of the game and you're you know hall of fame guy you, you you've won everything and a trainer takes you off a horse oh it's hard you know especially when it's a good horse you see if a good horse you don't want to you know you don't want to lose the mound because you know his potential you know so horses throw bad races sometimes and and right. and um they uh some 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 trainers they uh or owner, they get upset and they, you know, they have the, the right to put anybody they want. I understood that, you know, but uh, mm -hmm. but it hurts. It hurts when you lose a, a good horse. And um, I remember when I lost John Henry, he, he really, he, I, you know, it hurt me a lot because he, and it was for it, it wasn't even for a, for a mount. It wasn't, I mean, for, for a bad ride or anything like that. It was just because the the uh, the owner told that I didn't say hello to him. Really, and, uh, I don't remember even seeing him. You know, he said that I look at him and and I didn't say hello. <laughs> and and they took you off a horse for that. Yeah, they took okay. me off because of that. And then he went and won the big race in New York, and then he won he won the million. He right. won some big races with him. You know, so you know that. But that's 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 the name of the game. You know, you. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's that's interesting too. Now let, let me ask you this: you, as a top rider, obviously took mounts from a lot of other guys. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes you know you know you guys are all in the same room. You go out, you compete on a racetrack, but then you go back to the jockey's room. You're all in the same room. What's what's the dynamics of that? Like, the, is that awkward? Is it accepted that it's part of the game? Does it start fights? Like, like I know I may be like uh, not as well known rider, and you come bump me off a horse in the in the room. Uh, am I out of line if I come up to you and say, "Hey, Lafitte, come on, man, we're friends. What do you what do you do that for? I need the mount. You you want everything already." Yeah, but you know um, that's um, that we don't say anything about that because. That's that's the job that the agent supposed to do. Right. The agent goes and and he watches races, and and especially when he had a top rider, a rider that that trainers and owners wants, you know, he he's he's getting that position of uh, of going to any trainer or any owner and ask for a mount, and most of the time he's gonna get it because he's got a top rider. You know, when I want these little riders get beat on a horse and the horse has some trouble doing the race, the agent are going to try to get them out the next time, you know. And but that's something that I'm I'm so proud that I never did that. I never told my agent, listen, go after this horse because that rider is running bad or because uh, he should have won the race. I never did that. Never. I, I never told my agent, go, go after that horse. I don't want to take mount for anybody. In right. fact, I always have, I always have a lot of horses to ride, you know. So I, 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 I wasn't selfish that way. And in fact, I remember one time, uh, uh, Bear Bakker, I wish he was one of my best friends at the time. He still is, but I don't see yeah. him as much now. He had a good horse that he was going to run in the, uh, in a in a big race, and and I can't remember the name of the horse, but my agent. Uh, he called me up and he said, listen, this horse, he, he came up open. He says, uh, I know you are a good friend of Bear Rockerack. Why don't you go and, 
and ask for the mom. And I, I said, he put you on it. And then I said, listen, let me tell you something. I, I don't want it. I don't want it to put him on the spot. He's my friend. And I don't want to put, put him in his spot because he probably don't want me, you know, and I wasn't doing as good at the time. He said, he probably don't want me. And I, I and I, I won't do that. I said, that's your job. You go and ask him. Right. And then, you know, and then the horse, I think the horse won the race and then they're all going to, uh, to Dubai. And I can't remember if he won. Soul of the matter, maybe? Huh? Soul of the matter? No, I don't think it was him. Uh, Soul of the matter. I can't remember. Because I think that was that was Burt Backlund's horse, and yeah, I know he, he, got, he just got beat. He just got beat, or he won. I don't. I don't think he won. I think he just got beat. Right. But I. I won't do it. You know. I. I just. I just couldn't do it. I, I, I could see that. I don't think I blame you for that. I would probably be the same way. I would let my agent do it. I wouldn't want to put somebody yeah, on the no, spot. I, you know? I, no. Right. And then, you know, he says, no, you feel bad. You know what I mean? He says, yeah, yeah. you feel like he put you on the spot. I, I, could, I could definitely see that. Yeah. Uh, how good was Capote? He was a good horse. Very good horse. Very good horse. He he got hurt early. I thought he was going to turn out really, really. Yeah, well, he, well, he got. I think he got sick. He got right. sick and he had an operation. And uh, when Luca put him in a race because he wanted to run in the Derby, and uh, I think he finished. I don't. I can't remember what he did in the race, but uh, he he wanted to run him in the Derby, and I think he ran him in the Derby. And then after that, I, you know, was in, in I know he won the Breeders' Cup. I think he won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I think. I think you won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Yes, right? yeah, over here in California. Right. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. when, it, when, when you were on a racetrack, who was, who was, would you say was your biggest rival? Oh, I had a lot of them. Wow. Okay. I had a lot of them. But, but let me tell you the truth. Um, this only there were two jockeys that I was that I fought jockeys a jockey standing with him with, right. with, those, with those two jockeys. And this is the only two jockeys that I had to change my way of riding to beat him. Okay. One was Sandy Holly, and the other one was Paul Valenzuela. Okay. These guys, I'm telling you, horse had run for him like a, for them, like a, like a, I I never saw other riders that could make horses run like these two. One was speed, the other, the other one no, was, was not, not only speed, he could come from behind all the time too. Who, Pat? And, but he loved the outside. Pat, you told me. Sandy Holly loved the outside. Oh, Sandy Holly, okay. In the inside, he, he, he didn't want to go inside. Okay. But outside, he, when, when he went outside, forget it. <laughs> so what, what did you do with Sandy? You try and keep him on well, the inside, I, right? I learned that with Sandy Harley, he will, he will let his horses out, run as fast as he could in the backside. Okay. And then he, he will keep his horses very wide, no? And when he got to the turn, when he went straight to the, went way, way deep in the, on, on the turn, and then he made he made it. A left. He made a left hand. <laughs> he made a left hand turn. You okay. know, it wasn't like a, he'd take the, the, the turn. Right. No, he go straight and then bear into the inside. Make a sharp turn. Yes. So and what I would start, you do? And I start doing the same thing like he did. Okay. I would keep my horses wide and I make the and I start doing that. And uh, horses start work they start running for me you know I, that's yeah. something that i learned from him really interesting yes. what about what but about a lot, patrick a lot, of, a lot of riding get will get peace with you because when you come in they have to take back right <laughs> sometimes you tie them up you know so uh but i did that for a while and then uh and then after a while i quit doing it but sandy sandy left to canada he didn't come back anymore so i didn't have to deal with him anymore and then with Patrick, Patrick will be on the lead with any kind of horse, had a chance or no chance. And believe me, he will not stop. If you don't chase him early, you, he will not stop. You know, I, and then I start learning that, right. that the, the only way I could beat him is if I, as soon as you can get close to him, stay with him. 
put him, put your horse, put him in, put your head in front of him, and then uh -huh. you go with him. And <laughs> and I hated to ride that way because I wasn't my style. But well, that's the way I. That's the only way I could beat him. You know. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's... He was. He had a. a this dawn that uh, horses will not stop that easy for him. He would make him go, and and they would last with him. He didn't care how fast he went the first part, but he was winning all the race. And look at all the things he did. He would. They suspended him because he had a problem with uh, substance abuse, and uh, he would go for for months. He'll come back and he'll win a bunch of races again. Everybody loved him, you know? And, right. and he, he was always close to the lead or on the lead and, and you can beat him, you know? So, uh, yeah, he, he was tough. Right. Now, now, most people would say that in your, in, in, in your days, head and head, neck and neck down to the wire, you were the toughest guy to beat. OK, most most people who knew racing back then, and I think riders would say that. I mean, the toughest guy to beat head and head, probably Lafitte Pinquet. Who did you think was tough to beat head and head? Oh, man, there, there were a lot of men. Uh, I, Cordero? Think, I think Cordero was, he had more ability. He had more ability than any jockey I ever saw on a horse. He could do more things than anybody I ever saw on a horse, you know? And he was sneaky too, you know, he was very sneaky and uh, he would do anything to win a race. And uh, he was just great, you know, he, he he was always in good shape too. That's one of the things that he helped him a lot too. And uh, he he was tough, very tough, you know. So yeah. that's another writer that uh, we had some, some good ones in New York. <laughs> right. Good, good, good. I remember those those battles. You would come, you you, you wrote in New York originally, I think. Velasquez was another one. Velasquez was right. <laughs> Velasquez. Jorge Velasquez was a very, very tough, tough writer to be. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Now you 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 wrote in New York first, were a top writer there, then went to California, then would come back once in a while, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, well, in those time, in those time, I I was always uh, fighting like a, for the uh, for the uh, money top money writer of the right. year, and that's that's a way to win the Eclipse Award. Okay. And uh, the only it, Delmar have very uh, low purses at the time. That the only the only way that I could win that if I go to New York, even though I I didn't really wanted to because. Uh, it, the scale of weight was was less over there, right. and the clocker scale over there was very very tough. You know, he would never he don't want to let you go half a pound more. You know, and, and let you go. You know, so mm -hmm. I suffered a lot with my weight when I went to New York. Well, sometimes the clocker scales let you slide for half a pound. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> if if he saw you that you were trying hard enough to make the weight, yeah. <laughs> okay. I know um, now it's different, you know, but uh, yeah, now I think I mean, the, the, a, a pound or two, three pounds is not going to make any difference on a horse, you know. I, I carry overweight all, all my career, you know. Look how many right. pieces I won, you know. And right. So um, I don't think that made that different. Look, and now, now they have all this, all this 120, 22. The, the less they carry now is about 117. Right. You know, so, right. And I had to do 117 all the time, and uh, I had to kill myself for it. Yeah. No, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, last thing I'll, I'll ask you, and I'll, I'll let you go because if not, I'll keep you keep you on that long, man. Uh, did you, when you were going to ride, how much mental preparation did you do? Like, did you study the racing form, the past performances, or did you just know the horses from? from seeing them and, and riding them? Yeah, well, i tell you what, when I, when I was riding, when I went, by the time I got home, I left everything at the track. You know, I, okay. I, I told what I had to think about it on, uh, on my way home. When I got there, I forget everything. I, I didn't want to want to read the racing form. I didn't want to do anything. I do that in the morning, the next, the next day. Okay. When I went to the track, just, before the races, and then I started studying the racing form. You know, after I did all my preparation, after I 
uh, when I went jogging in the track and they went in the sweat bags and lose the way that I had to lose. And then um, I take a little nap, you know, because I went early to the jog zoom. I take right. a little nap and then I start starting the, the, the racing form. How yeah. much does the sweat box knock you out? Like when you come out of, out of the sweat box, you come out tired, right? Well, yes, definitely. You know, if you if you want to lose one, maybe two pounds, you know, someday it doesn't bother you, but someday it will bother you, especially after you're doing it every day, every day, every day, mm -hmm. and you start losing all your salt and your potassium and your mineral your minerals. Um, uh, uh, and it takes, it takes it takes a lot out of you. Definitely. And correct me if I'm wrong. If you go in a sweat box to lose a pound or two, you come out, you're thirsty, but you can't drink water. You'll put the weight yeah. right back on. You might right? have a sip of water, but that that's it. You know, you can drink. You cannot drink a lot of water because you want to go right back up. Right. And you you have to ride dehydrated. Wow. You that's know. Tough. That's yeah, tough. Yeah. It, it is on your muscle, you know, and and your legs, especially your legs that you support support you. Yeah, people yeah, don't, don't, when don't riding, realize that. When you're riding a horse and, and, and your leg is tired, <laughs> you, you can help him. You know, you, right. lose your, you lose your strength in your leg, you cannot help him. Right. You're just basically, when that happens, you're just basically yeah. hanging on, right? Def definitely. Definitely. Right. You cannot help him at all. If he needs help, if, if you need, if the horse needs you to help him to get to the wire, he's not gonna, he's not gonna, he's not gonna win. Not gonna have, right. <laughs> and I, and I, and I'm gonna be very honest with you. I lost a lot of races, a lot of races that I should have won. Uh, passing the wire, I would say, well, uh, if I, if would have been, if I would have been in better, in better condition today, I would have won this race. But I, I was weak. Right, and it's from from reducing, right, from the soil yeah. from, from the reducing. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it didn't stop you from winning, I was going to say a million, but I won't say a million, but it didn't stop you from winning, I, I, I gotta, I'm going to look it up, 9,530 races <laughs> with 7,784 seconds. Yeah. So it didn't hurt you, it didn't hurt you too bad, Lafitte, that's, yeah. that's, that's an unbelievable I one, career. I think one, I think one of the reasons that uh, it helped me to win that many races because I always show up, you know? Yeah. I don't care if I was sore. I don't care if I was hurt. I don't care if I was sick. I'd show up. I want to go and ride my horses and, and see what I could do that day. Listen, um, you don't have to tell me. That's what makes a champion. You, you, are, you, you are a champion. And I think the day after the affirmed disqualification in the Travis when you just didn't want to go to the track the next day and didn't want to hear the reporters and the, the BS and the nonsense and everything else, but you went anyway and went four races. That's, that's when you separate the men from the boys. No question about it. Well, yes. And I'm glad I did. <laughs> because it would, have, it would have killed me if I I'm see sure. I'm and sure. I, I won this day too. I won a hold for Lucas that day. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Lafitte, I, I can't thank you enough. I enjoyed this immensely. Uh, I, 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 I really did. I, ca I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. This was a, a great, great time for me. I love these kind of stories. I think you have one of the best careers of, of, of race riding ever in history. Uh, one of my personal favorite riders, uh, no question about it. Uh, watched you many, many times. Bet on you many, many times. Uh, I don't really blame riders for losses, so I can't say I cursed at you many times because I, I kind of learned young, you know, sometimes you just you just don't win. You live to fight another day. But uh, enjoyed your career immensely and even enjoyed this chat even more. So, Lafitte, thank you so, so much for coming on. Well, you're welcome, Jonathan. Anytime, you know that. Anytime. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I, I, I'll, I'll take you up on that. I'll stop yeah. this recording now, and then we'll say goodbye, and uh, I'll let you go. Nobody does it better.